And so we return for game number three, but effectively game number four in this best of five. Cloud9, 1-0 winner's bracket advantage. They lost game one to the Tiny Wisp. And in game number two, or effectively three, they took it for themselves. They crushed through fire. They now lead the best of five, two to one. They are one win away from going to Asia, going to China, and competing five in what's quickly seconds. become hurry, a mini hurry. international. Already well over a million dollars in prizes and rising. Fire, hoping to represent America, but have a lot of work to do to get there. And with that said, our draft now underway. Of course, I'm LD. I'm joined here by Merlini. Ben, you hanging in there, buddy? Oh, yeah. Another Wisp game for Cloud9. I hope Fire can hang in there. Yeah, I would love to see this go to a deciding game five. And they're going to go for the Lion this time around. It was kind of ignored in, in the past few games. Second phase banned in game Ten one, ignored entirely play. in game two. But it will be snagged rather early by Fire this time Five around. It's been a big really playmaker for Fog throughout the tournament, throughout their run here. And it's Was certainly a hero Cloud9 are aware of. They are even talking about it in the pregame lobby before the first game. So they, they definitely won't be surprised by this pick. So is Cloud9 going to go for a tiny first again? And is Fire going to draft a lot of Wisp counters? There's what? Disruptor, Timber, I think are p both really, really good versus it. Um, Undying used to be a really good counter versus EO, not so much anymore. Silencer can be decent. Yeah, Silencer is decent. I can't really think of that many more though, but last game it just, they just didn't have the correct tools to deal with it, so. Which is interesting because they, they knew it was coming very early. It was the first two picks Tiny West, but I think it just speaks to how hard the strategy is to counter when it's well executed. It really is. Chen. <laughs> I don't think is a really good way to deal with it either. I think Enchant might be a little bit better, just because you can put more pressure on early, but the Wisp just play really defensive and just hug Tiny, and then Tiny, you have to get past the Tiny to get to the Wisp instead of Wisp being off by his lonesome, you know, trying to do stacks and play super greedy. Well, Fire get some big bursts here in the Lion, which can be nice versus the Wisp, but Big Daddy is just so good at being elusive, and with the Lion bat, a double blink initiating duo, Pretty good at setting up traps around the map. Not something that's going to put a ton of pressure on in the very early laning, though. If C9 want to take Tiny, they have to take it now. I'm fairly certain that Fire will ban it out. And I know that EE has played uh, CK before, and it's pretty good versus their heroes. Uh, single target Lasso, single target Hex, single target Finger. These they don't have a ton of AoE to kill the illusions quickly, either. Yeah. Naga. Kind of similar to... Kind of harkens to what Secret was doing with Kuroki and, and Big Daddy. Naga's really good versus Bat, but not st super great versus Lion because he can kill the illusions quickly, but still pretty good because he can't deal with split push. And also, just very difficult Ten to initiate to on is these blink heroes with the Radiance Burn, the illusions constantly scouting here Five and there. Hurry, but they do hurry. lay their cards on the table rather early with this pick. Fire know everything will be built around the Wisp Naga. It's not something that It could be Naga mid, though. That's true. You actually don't know. You don't know how they're going to lane it, necessarily. But I guess so there could be a support Naga. You never know. Yeah. I haven't seen much of that, though. Can Misery play Wisp? I don't actually know. I don't know if I've ever seen him play. It's also unusual that Venge was banned out... Very, very often. I think almost every first phase and then completely ignored in this series. Not even not even taken. At all. <laughs> Third hero to be banned by fire now. They Ten know Eternal Envy's Naga is most likely the way this will go. The Wisp probably Radiance for Big bad. Daddy. They removed the Undying at Bone 7 round last game. It did not feel very effective, but it was a, a nuisance in their eyes. They don't want to deal with it. I think Jug would be pretty good for... Oh, it's banned, though. Oh, it is? Oh, okay, never mind. JK, I thought Fire was going to take it. I was like, Jug's a pretty good Wisp. Jug's been Five banned, like, really pretty good. much every game in the first phase, I think. Yeah. Uh, the Magic Immune heroes are really good at dealing with Wisp Tiny. Like, Life Die Sealer, too. Fast. It's pretty nice. Not only can you just actually kill the Tiny, you can also dodge uh, Relocate Gank, so you can actually split push. Right. And farm, whereas normally you, you don't have the lanes option, lane option available to you, especially like past the river, which really limits Ten your farm, which is why bit. Bristlebacks fell so far behind. Interestingly, they're going to ban out Terrorblade, a hero that has just flat hurry. out disappeared from the competitive scene. I mean, you go back like literally a month and a half Reserve ago, I think time. every Cloud9 game you and I were casting, 
It's like the only hero that we have to talk about, because Eternal Envy would play it almost every game. We don't see Terrorblade much anymore. I don't even- I don't think I saw it in any of Fire's recent games, but... Uh, maybe just not wanting to get out, out late game tier? I, I actually think it's more because of the push. They don't want to get pushed down early with the Naga strat. Naga and Wisp are pretty weak against push and five man, and Terrorblade's one of the best carries at executing that sort of strategy. Although Lion and Batrider aren't really linchpins in that sort of strategy, they can still execute it. And mm. similar to how Cloud9 took advantage of the Juggernaut pick yesterday, there are certain weaknesses that Naga is susceptible to. Well, Fire are playing it safe. They're going to remove the Tiny just in case it's not a core Naga. They definitely should. Uh, there's no reason that they shouldn't. Unless they know C9 inside and out, but it's it's too risky to leave it in. Demolish them last game. Which, I think Cloud9 is fine with. They're perfectly aware that Ben could still come out. If they really wanted the Tiny, they would have already taken him. The Fire now looking for a support. Oh, we pretty much know it's a Fogged Lion. The Bat for Ix Mike played it really well in the first game. They will go for a Silencer pick. Team pick. Mm, nice setup to try and gank the Naga Wisp to some extent. At least preventing those relocates. Silencer dissuades a lot of picks, though. Um, so a that's core pretty silencer nice. Silencer, by any chance? Probably not. I think it's probably a fluff silencer. I mean, Mike's not going to play it. I yeah. don't think TZ's going to play it. So it's either Ush or. I, I would say it's just Ush. Ush or Ooh, fluff. Seconds. Now, how do you build around this? Like, you ob obvious. It's pretty obvious. Five you global. You can jump in with that and lie and try to find pickoffs. But do you go further in that vein? Get like a storm or a. Doom, some more pickoff type pick. heroes. Do you back off for a hard carry for Ush? Well, it depends on what Cloud9 is going to do. The, you could see them shipped into like, okay, well, Silencer is terrible for split push, so we're going to go all in on the Naga as our carry and then uh, do like a 4 protect 1. Or they can be like, okay, well, we can just try and fight around it and go for a uh, BKB carry instead and then just try and bum rush the Silencer with Ten BKBs, if he globals, whatever, just BKB. And it's pretty good for all their heroes since they don't have any anti BKB. Five so you don't know what Cloud9 is going to do yet. And it. it, it differs very much on how you're supposed to draft later. The clockwork pick, I think, is very unusual. He's not very good versus bat. He's decent versus silencer, but I, um, I don't know. They don't really... He doesn't really synergize that well with any of their heroes. I guess, as I suppose, you can have, like, a weaker, like, relocate gank with the hookshot, but that's not as good as, like, a centaur or a duel or a lasso, like we traditionally see. Yeah, it's... It's a hero that Bone7 will bust out on occasion, and Fire will go for Radiant the Ush Void. Radiant. Like, the main heroes we've seen out of him are, are that, a little Slark, some Spectre and Anti-Mage, but... The last time we saw his Void, it was kind of a different take on the hero. He went for a, a naked Battle Fury, just boots Battle Fury. Played it more like a, a true hard one position. Not so much the, the ganking style, like Eternal Envy, for example, go, does go Midas, Mask of Madness. Played it... More like a ganker, but still ended up getting six slotted. But Ush took more of a farming route to get there. With this draft, it doesn't look like that's the direction, though. You've got so many ways to set up and follow up the chrono that it would be a little surprising if they if they try to play it that way. Now an invoker for Cloud9, second time in a row. A farming Naga counters Batrider and Silencer and Faces Void. All you need is a Manta style and Radiance, and then you're pretty much good to go. If they Initiate on anyone, you can just Manta and globe, Manta and sleep. If they don't uh, global, you just sleep. And all of them are terrible against split push. So I think it's pretty clear that Cloud9 Five is going to run remain. the Naga Siren safe lane, even if uh, the Invoker pick weren't to come out, just because of the Reserve face of Void time. pick. So looking at Fire now, they, they've got the Ush Void. Ten it does look like a support silencer almost certainly. For Fluff, the Lion for Five Fog, the Bat for Ix Mike, which hurry. needs leaves them needing a TC hero. Radiant they will uh, remove the Phantom Assassin. Huh. I guess they still think it could be a support Naga. I don't. Th I highly doubt it. They're like convinced this is a support Naga. To be honest. Well, that's one of the more confusing parts about playing against a Naga. How do you draft versus it? Because yeah. they could just switch. So Cloud9 looking for, what, a Five TC ban? Hurry, hurry. Zeus has been banned out. Brew has been banned out. You Viper, I suppose. Time. Viper is not terribly great <laughs> versus Io and Naga. We but saw is... Benno, but that's banned. Yeah. I'm trying to think what else TC has been playing. Those are the main ones. 
And this is for Cloud9. They're, they're the ones... Oh, the, the Queen of Pain. We have seen this a little bit. Props have actually been pretty popular recently. And they go for the mag. So with this fire get mass team fight, mass AoE, extremely potent late game. It's all on Naga and Invoker. I guess Clockwork has a pretty decent contribution too, but Naga, Siren, and Invoker are their main counter initiators here. There's, there's just so much initiation though. It's... I mean, I'm, Quas Wax Invoker can just destroy us so badly though. Yeah. Especially with the two melee heroes being initiators. Up until Fire get mass BKBs on the Bat Void Five Mag, which won't be for much later into the game. But it will be the Invoker and the Naga Song as the two main time. reset buttons that Cloud9 look towards. So is this the EE hero or a Misery hero? Hmm. Tough to call. Rubik would be pretty good for Misery. Plays, I know he plays a really nice Rubik. Uh, Disruptor I also think is pretty good too. And decent versus Bat with a counter initiate. Also the silence. Dump it on Void or Magnus if you're quick about it, but that's more risky. I think Rubik would be a lot safer for them. Maybe they want something to combo to better with a Clockwork too, so they don't have that much damage outside of Invoker dumping into it. Five seconds. Hurry, hurry. They're gonna lay it on the table now, and it's the Huskar. <laughs> oh yeah. They have run this a very occasionally. I think it's like once or twice they've busted out a Huskar. Obviously, this hero excels against magic damage based lineups, which I have a decent amount of. Hero that can do Roche pretty early. I mean, they have a lot of physical, We though. barely ever see this hero. There's some pure damage from Silencer. There's a fair amount from TC, too. I don't know. Huskar seems dubious dubious here, but, I mean, Eternal Envy feeling confident on it. I'll trust him. Yeah. I don't know how... Con he did go kind of down to the wire with the timer, so... Yeah. Maybe and that's a... a we'll give them as, you know much time to worry as possible. It's also not Five easy to get the last word off you, too, as Huskar. Like, it, you generally what, pr probably cast the uh, intervent pretty early and you initiate with your life break, so if you don't get that off, you're disabled for six seconds, which is ridiculously long to deal with. Oh, this is certainly something different. And all caps wish of good luck from Fogged. Looking to make some big plays once again on the Lion. And with that said, guys, we get underway with what could be the final match of the Dota 2 Asia Championships American Qualifier, or it could be only the beginning. We would move towards a decisive Game 5 at that point. It is, in fact, a Misery Support Naga. Something Fire were definitely anticipating. They banned two carries even after seeing the Naga picked up. Assuming it was not the Naga was that Secret have been using back when Big Daddy was on the team, and, well, he'll be playing a Support Naga. Used to be very popular at TI3, and... Around that era, EGM, I think, particularly known for it, but we haven't seen it too much lately. Big Daddy on your Wisp, gonna be rushing the bottle. Thada on that safe lane Invoker, it looks like he'll go for an early Bassy. Eternal Envy playing the Huskar, seconds. stacking up four Gauntlets of Strength and presumably relying on this Wisp to keep him in fighting condition, which leaves Bone Seven as the offlink clock on the side of fire. They send three heroes towards the bottom rune. Ush will be handling the mag, not on a hard carry this time around. Fluff and stuff, your silencer support. Fog does mention the lion. I expect the offlane bat, and it's TC who will play the faceless void. The last, the last Ush void game was not great, so I guess maybe because of that they figured they'd mix it up here. Free bottle for Ush, more or less. They get both runes. Many players criticize Huskar as one of the worst heroes in the game, but I actually think he's pretty decent. But I think one of the, one of his uh, downfalls is that he actually requires like a dedicated support to buff him up. So like Abaddon, Oracle, Wisp, um, Omni Knight. These are heroes that I view as almost imperative when you run a, uh, run a Huskar because he's not very self sufficient and he gets kited very easily. Uh, but once you do get those supports, he is actually pretty darn crazy. His damage output is insane. His survivability is also insane. His attack speed is really good, which is very good against like the typical uh, Bone 7. Yeah, quick rotation here, but it doesn't look like they'll get too... Uh-oh. He's sticking around for a while and ends up actually DCing. It's only a level 1 void with time walk. Mm. <laughs> I think he's actually... It, mm, there's no bashes. He has 500 HP with stout. 
If so. they get some ridiculous body block, maybe. <laughs> no mercy from Ix Mike. He wants to win this one for Murka. Fog taking it easy on Bone, but... I don't know, Ben. Sometimes it's not good to be a nice guy. Showing manners. I mean, the servers have just been absolute poop. They, you, you have to you sympathize. You can easily be on the other side of the situation. Yeah. You can't help but sympathize with Bone Seven. He's getting punched right now. Punch him! This creep's doing some work. So overall, draft... Hmm, I don't know. I think I like fires a little bit more. It's more far more difficult to execute, though. Like, you, you have to hit RPs, and you have to hit them so that you don't get... You, you have to call them perfectly with the global, or else you get slept and you waste one of your ultimates. You also have to make sure that Tornado doesn't catch you out. You also have to make sure that Huskar just doesn't jump on you. Um, and you also have to make sure that Clockwork doesn't jump on you either. There's a lot of things that are working against the Magnus here, and same with the Faces Void. Uh, if you don't catch Naga, you're going to get slept, you're going to waste your ultimate, and you're going to be in a really bad position without your escape tool. Um, same with Batrider. All these heroes can get countered by the Naga Initiate. Uh, so, you don't really want to blow like three ultimates just to kill a Naga, or even just to kill anyone but the Huskar, I'd say. Maybe maybe the Invoker, but mm -hmm. if they use all their ultimates, Huskar can just go ham with the, with the Wisp too. So, fire... More seems, delicate lineup. It seems like a lot of it comes down to getting some right click as well on this void. Like if he's not if he's not hitting hard, how are they going to kill a farmed Huskar? They have, like you said, some pure damage, some basic right click from Empower, but it's not an overwhelming amount. It's very item dependent how hard they can hit the Huskar. Yeah, it doesn't look like Moon Seven is going to be able to really shut him down either. That's true. So TC should get close to free farm here. And at the same time, the one thing that's interesting with the Wisp this game is generally when we see Wisp picks, they're with heroes that can really abuse the jungle. But C9 aren't particularly adept at that, outside of the Naga, who's in a support role. So I want to, I want to point out they didn't bother to break down the trees like you often will see if it's a tiny Wisp. He is going to send the bottle out. It might be a much different style compared to what we saw last game. C9 begins. with the silent treatment. Romanian internet. Not sure if these are flames from Fogged. I've heard the internet in Romania is actually pretty good. Who knows? I don't know. Well, I think this new C9 has a lot more versatility uh, than before. Or actually, that that's not necessarily true. It could just be they're experimenting a lot because they have a new lineup. So I don't actually know whether that or not. That's it does case. seem like they're more versatile. It does seem like it. Yes. Now the old clan I was never afraid to bust out a, a crazy pick or a new way of playing, but it's like they would find something new and then they would just run it a lot. Kind of like good example would be like Goblack with the you know, like the Triant Protector at first was like, oh my god, this guy's actually making that hero work and no one's running it, and then. Just kept on running like a tree or an abad in every game pretty much for a while. But they have been one of the more adaptable teams in Dota in general. And look at some of the strategies they came up with the TI TI4 Bounty Hunter Meepo strat. Not so much inventing Terrorblade Dota, but more just perfecting all the little details about it. They like to polish the the, the finer points. All right, Ben. We have a pause, my friend. You know what this means, right? What does that mean? We start making random bets on the game. Random bets. When will Bone 7 die? Okay. Um, I'm going to say he'll die before five minutes. Before? I'll take the over. You'll take after that, five minutes. That's a very risky over. All but right. you, you owe me a shot. You owe me a shot if, uh, if he doesn't. Or okay. vice versa. Fair enough. Red Bull will be consumed. What about... Mm, 
Roshan time. First Roshan death. Mm, there's a Huskar in this game. Fire are not very good at Roshan. Mm, they're, they're not. Not at all. <laughs> uh, where do you want to set the over-under? I don't know. It, it could be anywhere from like 12 minutes to like 31. I, I have no idea. Okay. Somewhere in between there. <laughs> That's a pretty wide range. Well, I can set a range and you can say outside the range. Uh, it's it, definitely not. That's so you picked like the juiciest range, twelve to thirty-one. Well, I know that's a really big range. Obviously, I would try and s yeah. Knock if it you want to narrow it down to like fifteen to twenty or something, about seventeen to twenty-four. Seventeen to twenty-four is my time. So you think it will happen during that time? Yes. I'm gonna say no then. Okay, here we go. Uh -oh. We got it. Okay. I'm just writing down our predictions real quickly so there's no confusion. Bone will take a lot of harass, gets back in the game, but as Fire graciously agreed, they will not attempt for a kill. I mean, level, level one time walks only 20%. Yeah, they would have to like time walk in front of him. And Body block like crazy. If, if that's level two voiding, it's a batch. It's very different, but. Clock is also 315 move speed, so it's definitely possible. Looks like Usha's struggling in the middle lane. Melee hero versus Huskar. No thank you for the melee hero. Yeah, Bone's gonna get caught out though. This might actually be the first blood. He's surrounded. Uh, Fluff has a point and Glaive, so he can get a couple of extra oh, nukes god. out. Oh god, I lost. Auto attack Bone 7! Down oh, for god. the count. Fire strike first. That was easy. I blame, I blame the drop. <laughs> <laughs> Why did I take the That's over? one. That's one. Over on anything Bone 7 related. That's one, Ben. You want to make some more bets while we're at Jesus. it? Jesus. <laughs> well, you gotta hope for the rush now to even things out. In Bone 7, we do not trust. I mean, he shouldn't die to that lane. That was a very awkward position he found himself in. Like, way out in the middle of nowhere. Uh oh, Big Daddy. He'll be given a bottle charge here by Ash and backs off of this top bird. Meanwhile, Ix Mike. Trying to steal some neutrals and actually doing pretty well in this offlane so far. About to hit level three. Certainly better than Bone, who's one end has a first blood against him. The support Naga and just running this this one support has not been able to shut down the bat much. Nah, melees in general just have a really hard time shutting down bat. If you commit too hard, like even three stacks is enough to Oh hush. Oh my goodness, that is uh, painful. Hush. Loudly burnt. And the sound effect for that is like Twice as loud as everything else. Yeah, so, as we can see, it's going to be a hard life for Ush in the mid lane. 6 and 0, constantly being harassed. It's only the level 2 burning spears as well. This is going to continue to hurt. And I do want to point out, Ben, we're finally getting to see something you've been basically begging the players for, which is more Quas Exhort Invoker. Oh, I think Quas Wex is definitely really good. Yeah. But. Quas Exhort definitely has a time and a place. It, there's a period where just like no one would ever go for it, but they're gonna mix it up a bit. So it gives them more of a, a dual or even triple threat if Misery later on ends up transitioning to that support Naga kind of becomes a carry, but... It's also really important to have more burst during Clockworks Ultimate and Cog. Mike? Out in no man's land. Are they gonna follow up with a Sunstrike? We'll get netted. The long range tether comes through. Sunstrike's there! Nice clean pickoff. It's Cloud9 who make it a one-to-one -one score now. They are allowing the enemy Void to free farm. That's being traded for Eternal Envy's farm, as well as the Invokers. CS overall looking quite favorable here for Cloud9. But the clockwork struggle in the offlane is, is making up for it. And we'll have a little dance for the top rune, but... I'm very surprised that EE took one level of Intervit this early. <laughs> Level 1 is generally not very good. Yeah, it's, it's a lot of mana. 170 mana is Well, I guess for the amounts. mana, he's got the Wisp. I mean, it doesn't heal that much for him. That's true. And he already has the Wisp for the heal. I think it, it's Maybe very... Maybe something to do with, like, a Roche attempt fairly early, or... I don't know, maybe so, but even then you want Max Berserker's blood. That's you true. you really want Max Berserker's blood at level 7. Yeah. And then you you obviously take Life Break at 6. So that means he won't get Max Berserker's blood until, what, 8 at the minimum? Like getting caught out bottom lane, Sunstrike will follow this one up and it brings him low. Cold snapped as well. Uh, they need a couple more auto attacks. He'll he'll make it out with the help of the the firefly. Over the high over the kill and away to safety, but he's starting to take a lot of pressure. Good news is he's still getting more of the bone seven. 
This poor guy. Not been his day. Level 1 at 5 minutes. So it looks like an HOD rush or two. Might see him stack, might see an early creep to do Roshan. For now we're going to see Ush taking a, a beating in the mid lane. There's your level 3 burning spears. They're going to push around, bringing Bone 7 up north and then swinging him down, but Ush will anticipate this and just back the hell off. While his team goes for the trade, TC pushing in the top lane, has gone for the completed treads. Bone 7 now TPing in, more reinforcements coming, but Fog's waiting. He'll be prepared here with the Hex, the follow-up Impale will come out, though even Chrono just wanting to ensure that they get this kill. Why the first death, Bone 7? Why? Do you have to do that? Oh, that was after five minutes. Yeah. We'll have mercy on you. <laughs> Your poor oh liver. no, Your poor liver. Big Daddy. Okay. He, he's normally very good at not dying at all on Wisp early, but this oof. rare death for Big Daddy. That's oof, man. The oof in the early treads. We've you know, seen all kinds of different void openings. Treads, Aquila, probably the most common for a while. We've seen the Naked Mask of Madness from Eternal Envy. Ush went for the Battle Fury Rush the other day, but... You go for these early stat items, and it often does translate into one, two extra kills you wouldn't otherwise get, which can make up for it. The econ economic loss. I think I was going to say economic for some reason. English is hard. So, EE will not be going the Max Berserker's Blood. We'll be getting 1-3-1. One, one. One. That's a little unusual. I guess maybe with Wisp you don't expect to get that low from Berserker's Blood, but I think it's really good at preventing a lot of the magic damage. Magnus provides a lot. Silencer provides a lot. So does uh, Lion. Actually, Batrider too. Pretty much everyone except for the Void. You know, it may just be for the last word. Like, you were bringing that up earlier, so... Perhaps oh yeah, that's the, the reason. The one inner bit, but yeah. even then, Max Burning Spear... Ooh. Close call for Hex Mike. But this does prompt a pretty big, heavy rotation. The entire team moving on. So TC will get a Mask of Death of his own, so it looks like he'll be going for the, the early Mask of Madness. And I gotta say, there's some very easy kills at this stage of the game. Bone 7, if he's not at full health, a pretty easy kill. The Eternal Envy gonna be very tough. The Wisp, an easy one if, if he's actually caught out, but generally won't be envisioned. Fauna's gone for a Midas, so he'll be in a vulnerable state for a bit. Even Misery, only 660 health. Lion coming in with the smoke as well as the silencer. Batrider close to follow, but he's only level 4. No flame breakup. Misery waiting. Oh, they, they managed to get around the corner. Now they show Ix Mike. This is a perfect setup for fire to get in close and go. And they look for Fada, but he just goes straight into the tree line. They're already TPing in the Wisp as reinforcements. Fada's got a lot more to worry about, though. They bring him down. The Impale connects on two. Fog has been on point with those two hero stuns and at the same time it's bone seven getting bashed in the top lane there's chrono mana here he gets that extra bash which means he knows he can go for the kill bone seven will end up falling and now they are starting to cinch the noose in the bottom lane on to big daddy he gets last worded taking so much early pressure skewers off the mark though they still bring him down with the rp follow-up where is eternal envy he's got an arm lady's he's pushing mid unfortunately no teleport scroll Boy, they could have really used him in that fight. He does take the tower mid instead, though. And it's actually not the Helm of the Dominator going for the Armlet. Oh, the Armlet Rush. Oh, okay. I thought he was going to do an early Roche build with that. Actually, he does Roche, solo Roche with Armlet, too. How could I forget? Oh, we don't see very much Huskar, so... Yeah, I've seen him play it before, though. Yeah. Bone 7, played it like two or three times. Strug City, level 4. TC is double his level. Almost level 9 now. I might are on the smoke. Eternal Envy and Big Daddy, they're going for that Roshan. They do know Chrono's down. They also know RP's not available. Global hasn't been skilled yet. And no, he doesn't have six, I should And say. they also get really lucky with the DD rune. And there's no dire vision of that rune either. Well, it's outside that window. I was like, okay, it's EE. Man, I put the wrong time to bet. <laughs> He'll get fast here. Brought quite low, but he toggles in between the Roche and auto attacks, and with the Wisp here to help reinforce him, has the stick charges if things get dire, and... Oh, laying it close to the vest, but he'll finish off the rush. Age is to be claimed now. Two shots for me. You're on a roll, my friend. <laughs> it's Cloud9, man. I can never bet on Cloud9. <laughs> you just can't win. 
You tend to have pretty bad luck with the bets, I have to say. Nah. Or good luck, depending on your point of view, I guess. So Huskar has really yet to... Oh my goodness, he almost died in tower there. I guess he's been used to armlet toggling. I feel like watching Envy play Huskar is like watching someone who's like a good driver just drifting around in the snow intentionally. And... <laughs> you don't feel very safe if you're in that car, but they, they, they know what they're doing and will live life on the edge. They will continue pushing though, they're just gonna basically use this Huskar like a siege engine. It's gonna force a reaction out of fire. Still no global yet. They do a finger of death online, won't really help against the Huskar, but... No blink on that either. And comes the big dunks attempted by EE. They see Big Daddy here, but unfortunately the Magnus getting pursued out. Everybody's starting to rotate in. Now they teleport in the Void as well. Envy standing in the tower. The Void ends up canceling his TP. I think he got pushed back by Bone 7 with the cogs. He did. So he can't even join the fight. They know there's no Chrono here. Void maybe even goes for a kill instead. And they end up popping the Aegis. Well, that's, that's the, unfortunate. The armlet toggle. Armlet shenanigans. Not really paying off. Not with... If you don't have Max Berserker's blood, you will die to the curse. Which is exactly what happened. Mm. Which is why I was questioning why he didn't get Max Berserker's blood. Mm. And it, the, he hasn't really had to see the silencer. So if it was about the last word, then... It hasn't really come into play up until now. This means Fluff hit 6. So they have their global. Ash still no blink, but close. And the blink... For Fogged is also close, 1900 gold, and the Batrider at 1800. The triple blink is coming, and it's coming within the next 2-3 minutes. Big pickups inbound. PC gonna get scouted out here, Eternal Envy with the d jump in, he's got a time walk, level 4, and he'll just go for the long range time walk. There is a Chronosphere, and he'll need to use it, he goes on Big Daddy, kills him off, and oh no! Actually doesn't! Burns down to the spears and the orbs! Thought he would get the kill there, but just not quite able to pull it off. And the Chrono expended the boot. Did they mean to bring EE in there or not? I'm not sure. I'm not sure either. It looked like it was like half bait, half... Half miss... Uh, beats me. I guess it worked out. Big you know, Daddy trying to drop a ward behind the tower. Fluff will drop a sentry. And... and unfortunately, Big Daddy drops the ward a bit off. Just out of range. So no relocate out, Bone 7 finally hit level 6. Silencer is a prime target to initiate on. And Bat Rider, 2271 gold, there it is. Lion, 2250 gold, there it is. Magnus, just needs 150 more. Oh, and he finds a stack, very nice. Juicy. They've done a really good job of stealing Cloud9 stacks. The, the game 1 in particular, Mike was doing doing it a lot, got a triple stack at one point in the mid game, and watch doing it again here. So It's something Cloud9 do a lot to their own opponents. Yep. Uh-oh. Off in a bit of a pickle. If he sticks around, but he will retreat out. Necro book one up on Invoker, so so many com items coming out right at this 13 minute mark. Three blinks, and a Necro book. And what is Olnaga's Siren? Just a Tranquil Soul. E9. How how strong do you think they're going to be in the next fight, now that all the blinks are out? It's really difficult to tell with the Huskar. It all depends on Armlet Toggle. If if they commit a lot and he is able to heal an Armlet Toggle through it, they'll get owned. Or Fire will get owned. But <laughs> if We've seen this movie before. Pulled up onto the high ground, lassoed by Mike, and, and just finished off quickly. He has not been much of a factor this game. This series, I'd say. I don't know if it's just the servers and he's lagging and he's tilting or just an off day for him, but it's not working out. I mean, his ping isn't even as bad as US West to Lux, so if he thinks he has a bad, all the Vancouver players have it worse. That's true. Far worse. So Fluff getting harassed a lot by these four spirits is not quite in Sunstrike range. But they're, they're really putting a lot of pressure on the supports in general. Misery and Mike gonna cross paths here. There is a Song of the Siren. He's got no stick charges currently. Not going to engage. And now EE e. and Big Daddy will smoke, but as they move into the dire jungle, everyone is not home. They're off on the southern side of the map. TC, Fluff together. Ush, also farming the woods. Are they gonna go on Fog? Fog? He's got the blink. 
Yeah. Oscar will follow him. Oh, uh, Hulkshot hitting the creeps. Fog gets off the impale on two, but not running away from this. They'll bring him down. Prompts a TP reaction from the bat. Morning Mike to try and hold the tower. Eternal Envy is thinking about a jump. He's got his Nikes on, looking for the big slams. They do have global here. Huskar's such a slow tower seizure, though. If only burning arrow, burning spears worked on tower like uh, Klinks's. I feel like that'd be so OP. Klinks's does. Yeah, but Klinks isn't like nearly as tanky. He has death pact. That's true. I guess death pact has been buffed. Well, searing arrows doesn't do nearly as much damage as burning spear either. Burning spear does what 160. Yeah, and it's it's over time as well, so. Just you can just like throw one in and then back off and just do like the Dragon Knight thing basically, I guess. It would make them more viable. <laughs> Even half the amateur towers. Well, by that metric, they should just do five times as much damage. They'd be more viable. <laughs> <laughs> so the Huskar pick has accomplished the initial goals, right? Like, they got the early Rosh, he's been able to farm the woods, he's getting a lot of experience in gold. Yeah, but this is, is a this PvE. Is this good enough? You're up against Mag Void. Void is farming pretty well. It's pretty much all about whether or not he can survive through a Chrono. I would say. The, or relocates, the, the relocates out could be a game changer. Yeah, they have silence. They have global silence. So it's like Arma Toggle and pre tether and stuff like that. Overcharge. Unless Big Daddy somehow farms a, a BKB or something, but that's a, a long way off. Fog is looking for misery. And right as he waves his arms to try and lasso, they global. They'll kill him, but they'll lose Fog does the turn. No, maybe not. But he's not just kidding. Bone 7 there. Hooks him, finishes him off. It was a global committed as well as a finger to get that support Naga down. Pretty big investment on that kill. Well, Naga's also gotten a calling blade. I'm not sure if he's going to transition, but with the way the game's shaping up, I would you may not need to blame go him. That Radiance build. Well, I mean, even like a Halberd would be pretty good. But, I mean, if you can farm a Radiance, why not? If, if they're just going to play passively, you might as well have three cores other than two. Uh, since Bone 7 isn't really doing that much. Uh oh, they're hunting for TC here. He does have time walk, he'll time walk back into the lane and that ends the push onto him. A blade mount now picked up by Bone 7. This is pretty much his go to clockwork item. Occasionally we've seen the orchid and the armlet, but generally only if he's rolling people over and this game is anything but. I wonder what EE is going to get next. He has 3,600 gold. He has problems catching people. I would not be surprised if he got a blink. He could also go BKB. Satanic, I suppose, is an option, but... Hmm. Bottom tower under fire. What else would be good for him? Armor would be okay, too. AC, maybe? Crimson Guard Huskar is actually insane, too. Yeah, because you're already really good against magic damage, and Dyer's now you're super resistant to physical fire. damage as well. Especially for someone like Void, who hits fast, but not very hard. Hookshot comes in from... From Bone 7 onto Fog, now pulls himself out, but he'll be turned on with an Impale. Not finished off just yet. The Clockwork finally ending him. They have Chrono, and they throw it out, but it doesn't catch the Naga. Chrono wasted. Oh, the one most important hero he just had to catch. He couldn't do it, and now EE preps for the big jump in. He goes for the dunk, but he gets skewered back mid-transition. And then nothing much good happens. Eternal Envy lasso. They still have no damage to bring him down. He's just going to armor toggle this off. He runs over IX Mike. They all have to back off. And now they have no global, no chrono, no RP, no lasso. Finger cooling down soon. They actually just got the global back. It's That's the thing about the Huskar. You commit to killing him. You're like, oh, he's almost dead. Use your spells. That was even a sick play by Ush. He skewered him away while he was life breaking the time the faceless void without time walk that was huge i didn't even know that worked <laughs> that was pretty cool yeah and the, and they still couldn't kill huskar and then the blink lasso and then the rp and the chrono it was just the everything. naga the naga really threw them for a loop and I, that would have been different if they had global right if they have global there naga can't get off the song can he even kill the huskar though i don't he was at like half hp i don't think they can kill him he has a fair amount of armor too i guess at least then they can go for the supports and get like some something out of it but yeah, it's... Now Huskar has BKB, so... Goodbye Global 2 Huskar. Yeah, they have so many ways to lock him down through BKB, but it's it's doing the damage that's the, the really hard work. Void is starting to get more right-click now. Battle Fury picked up, so TC's farm will accelerate pretty dramatically off of this. They're not really 
putting much pressure on him directly, more just by pressuring elsewhere on the map. But don't forget about Invoker too. He can do a lot of damage even through Global 2 because he has a Necro 3. And on top of that, if he doesn't get Global, he can just straight destroy the Void if he doesn't get caught in Chrono. Deafening Blast, just Sunstrike right on top of him with a Mask of Madness. He has a ton of damage that he can work with to just straight blow up the Void. So Ush, gonna need a BKB I'd say, fairly soon. He's He's going to need a BKB, TC, probably going to need one as well. Like oh yeah, I keep thinking Ush is on. Oh, okay. Ush is on Void. Yeah. I'm I think Ush play will void need so one much. too, though. At the, rate, at the rate that Fada's going, he's going to have a pretty early Hex. If he wants to pick one up right away. Maybe he gets like a Yules to even deal with the Global, or a BKB. Is Misery going to get a Minus? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> is that even a question that needs to be asked? Do we want to bet on it? I think you. I think you. That number three. I'm not feeling it today. <laughs> I'll cut my losses. So a little bit unlucky for uh, Cloud Nine too. They were checking the Roche pit. They had pretty good control of the Roche since Fire had all their ultimates down. But it was a rather late spawn. Looks like it was about what around two minutes when they checked around 1:30. It was a close one. I think, to be honest, Naga just gets a Manta style. And then, if she gets a Manta or BKB, I think Manta's a little bit better because it's more utility. She can just split out a global and then song anything they have to throw, as long as she doesn't get caught in the ultis themselves. That last fight, Misery was pretty close to the team. More just TC just couldn't find anywhere to cover everyone up than, than Misery being in some great position. But it just ended up working out for him. That's the thing, though, is there are quite a few heroes you have to catch here. The Invoker can counter-initiate hard until you get the BKBs. Huskar, obviously. Huskar will destroy you if you don't catch him. You don't care about clock so much. And the Naga can song. You have to get Wisp, too. Wisp can relocate out. That's true. So, yeah, it's like four of the five. Clock you can pretty much ignore. But if you cover up with Global, then you really only need to get Huskar, I'd say. I don't know. They, I Huskar don't... and maybe Naga if she gets Manta. Once again, mm -hmm. we'll see what she gets. You go Midas Manta too. I don't know. Midas Radiance Midas Manta. Midas is really good just for the levels, I feel like. Just get your level 16 out as quickly as possible. Yeah, he's pretty far behind in levels. He's been dying a fair amount. Level 8, lowest in the game. Same with Bone 7, and Fog, and Fluff. Tied. Four eights. So TC will go into the Roche Pit. He will know that it's up, and he's starting on it. Wow, this is bold. This is very bold. Is the Radiant War drop down here? I, I, I don't think, think it was he's Oh, they just saw Fluff, I think, on the minimap. Just got a little X, but I don't know if they noticed it. It was only for like a quarter of a second. Now they're going to empower TC. That's a level 2 empower. And this Roche is dropping very rapidly. One of the big reasons why they like this Huskar is, is for the fact that he could just grab Roches easily. But EE, they might sunstrike. They only have a few seconds left. If they scout it out any later than like three seconds from now, then it's gone. Global is online. It's it's pretty much done. They're not gonna know. They're not gonna go for it. Big pickup here for TC. Actually, they're about to smoke. It looks like four heroes grouped up. Hurry are coming in. Cloud Nine just probably shaking their heads right now. Just a few. They like have a, a rocket flare later. too. They have so many ways to scout it out. I'm very surprised that they didn't. They're usually on top of the ball for that. They're usually one of the most disciplined teams about about that type of. Ush. Thing. Uh oh. Could be bad. He's got a force staff. The force. But Eternal Enemy almost in range. He gets up getting fog. At the same time, there's a hook shot coming and catching out. Fog Global was used, so Misery can't saw him. They get the first kill inside of that Chronosphere, bringing down the Wisp, but now TC's gonna fight Eternal Envy. There's your RP, beautifully done by Ush, cleaving through them all. That's a triple for TC. A one wonderfully timed global and fire take out four. Couldn't get the song off, couldn't relocate out. If they execute it right, it seems they have the firepower to bring C. Why are they smoking up that hill, though? They're smoking up into a choke point, so they don't even need to use global during the Chronos here because everyone's clumped up already. Yeah, Naga was very close to Solmi though. They, they didn't catch her again, but... Oh! <laughs> Thanks, Mike. Dodging bullets here. It was also a weird time to go with all the ults up, and they just got the Aegis as well. But I guess Cloud9 just feeling like it was time to start applying pressure. Huskar didn't get his BKB off. I don't think it would have mattered, though. 
Boy's gonna take this tower bottom lane. He just turns on Bone 7, and it looks like he'll get a freebie here, but oh, ends up popping the Aegis for that one. Colonel Envy waiting. There is a little bit of backup here in the form of Watchful. Time walk out. Retreats to safety, and that'll be it. Relocate gonna end, and EE goes right back to the well. I don't know if he regrets his BKB choice. I think he actually does. It didn't serve him well at all last fight. And it, it seems like it, it's just not going to help him much because the main way, in terms of living through the Chrono, because the main way he's going to die from that is just yeah. the void right click. I think Crimson Guard and Blink might have been a better build this game, personally. Um, just so he can actually catch the void. Oh, Fluff a will... Big scout from him. These three heroes. But at the same time, bottom lane, the lasso comes in the real action. Zyx Mike will bring him down. This Necrominion, they're saying keep it in the flames, he'll die to it. Exploding what? No? Them. No? I guess the flames wore off anyway. Not worth giving him 200 gold. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I don't know about that. Well, that was a good, that was a clever idea though. Kuskar, yeah, he's gotten his farm, but other than that, hasn't really contributed that much, aside from taking the ultimates in the right fight. But if properly executed and fire with all their cooldowns up, should be able to dispose of a Huskar quite easily. There's a glyph. They're going to start nuking Bone 7. At the same time, Hookshot comes out. Up the mark. Fluff going to TP out. And then Ush will use this opportunity to take the tower down. So he gets the tier 1 mid. Fire have really whipped this game around. It's now a 5k swing. They lead by a, K, a thousand gold. They're up 8,000 experience. And they've got the big wombo combo late game lineup. I think they really relied on Roshan to if if he gets BKB, he can Roshan through or Aegis through one life, BKB through another, and hopefully clean up. I think that was their idea, but without the Aegis, he just dies on a chrono. Or actually last time it was a chrono and an RP, but he'll just die on a couple of their ultimates. And fire, they really have to get mileage out of their ultimates. And if they don't, then Huskar's gonna destroy them. So far, so good. That said, the bottom lane is out to the tier 3. There's no more buffer buildings there. Oh, it's a Blink Naga. But Blink doesn't prevent global, so... And that was the... That was the... That's the big thing that you can clearly tell Fluff is looking for, is just make sure that you don't let Naga song when the chrono happens. Comes Mike's Mike. It's Firefly. He's gonna try and be a nuisance to Big Daddy. But... Bone 7's rambling through the woods. Hookshot online. Hush. I think was spotted out walking into this camp. This could be a big takedown if he doesn't blink out in time. Oh, he will. Still, they have vision on him. Hook comes and connects. There's a four staff, though. So they relocate on this. They are going to as Ush TPs out quickly. No way to cancel this unless Clock can get in range, but he doesn't. Can't get the battery assault. Many stun off. Again with the good escapes, and now Ush very close to his BKB. This is getting worse and worse for Cloud9. I'm still theorycrafting why Huskar is amazing versus this lineup, but I, I, I'm failing to see it at this moment. I feel like you're normally more likely to see that here if it's like someone picks like a Lion. We saw Lion Lena earlier. You know, like just super heavy magic burst. I mean, Lena would own with pure. If she gets something. Oh yeah, that's right, the new but one. But I, I but get yeah. what you mean. Yeah. Well, it's not panning out Boyd does do a decent amount of magic down with time lock, but he also does so much physical with power that it kind of doesn't matter. Well, usually you'd be in that situation where, okay, you'll die, but I, I'll die too. Yeah. But with a void, with a BKB, it, it's... and Chrono, it's just not a trade. So he's only died once, and we'll see if he can pull things through in the later game. Highly unlikely if they get the next Roshan. Uh, we'll see the timer on it not they, too long. They do now. have a Hex coming for Fada. Oh yeah, Fada. He's been really quiet this game. Yeah, he is their most farmed hero at this point, but it's priority number one. You'd, you'd love for it to be that void. They need blinks. They have to like bait the void into a terrible position so that Fluff is forced to global. And with the with with just so many ways to back him up, it's not easy to get him out of position to that extent. But yeah, if they if they could somehow force out the BKB, maybe he whiffs whiffs the chrono. Perhaps Clonine could try to do something there. For now, TC clean up massive stacks, 4k gold in his pockets. 
staying ahead and everyone on fire getting their farm aside from fluff. They're doing a good job. If Cloud9 go on to lose this game, we go to a deciding game number five, and it means one, basically a BO1 to see who goes to China for a million plus dollar tournament. That would be a pretty hype game five. Starting to feel like this is Fire's game to lose. Yeah, Void is just getting to that ridiculous status. Of course, dying without buyback is one way it can fall apart. M but right now, TC's olds. sitting on 4.5k gold. Yeah. I guess I said, whiffing your old is a bigger deal, I think. Yeah. More likely to happen as well. Is he gonna buy Refresher next? Let's see. Oh, Demon Edge coming out. The more right click here for TC. Nearly has the, the MKB, the Daedalus. And as he's about to complete his next big item, Fada has closed it on his own. He now snags a Hex. Fada really needs a Blink. I think he needs to be the one that like initiates on uh, Void and like Blink Sheep dump your combo really quickly so that Global won't cover him and then they can proceed from there. And then without the Void, I think Huskar will go crazy. So a lot of this is on Fada, unfortunately, uh, just because Misery can't really do that much without a Manta or BKB to dispel the Global. Unless Fluff's out of position, but you can't count on that. Yeah, you can just sit at the well if you're really worried about it. Oh, that's a short respawn. Let's see how long Fluff sits in there. The Rosh spawns have been good to fire these past two. They really have. And Naga Illusion's gonna come in right before it. Cloud9 not getting the... the best luck here when it comes to Rosh. They will rock it, and it's also right before the respawn. I think his rocket might expire Those right before it respawns, which is probably the worst time possible. Because then you think you're safe. Yeah, he's actually got another rocket. He just keeps on spamming them at the pit. This Dyer's one should probably see it. Gonna hit, and right. Right at that exact moment, Rush destroyed. respawns. So this time they won't get completely caught off guard. They also managed to take down the tier 2 tower. Fada collecting that. EE, -E, No Tail, and Misery starting to move towards the south side of the map where Ush and Fogged are waiting. They show TC here. And without TC, there's really no Roche for fire. So Cloud9 know they're not rushing now. They'll scout it again and again. Man, they had a serious team chat after that last we rush got snuck. They didn't actually have song for that fight, though. I think it would have been actually really bad if they had taken that fight. They would have clumped up for Magnus. They would have clumped up for Chrono. They would have... Uh, Batrider could have lassoed them up the hill. So let's see if TC goes into the pit. Has the Daedalus now. So. He does get a lot tankier though. Picks up his Satanic. They like 2500 health when he turns on the armlet. Okay, well Ush is not there. Let's see if they can take the fight here. Lion is also not there. He is CPing to the, the base. They're it's at half in. HP. They look for Ike's Mike. Eternal Envy down in the river. He's going to commit into the pit. TC's waiting for him. Goes on the fluff. Quickly deals with him. He's going to have to chrono in such a way that there's no... He doesn't actually catch Eternal Envy, but still is winning the man fight with him. Brings him down. Where's that RP follow-up? They've already songed here by Misery to try and stall. And Eternal Envy, no buyback. Your Wisp, also no buyback. Hookshot off the mark. A series of unfortunate events. The chrono didn't actually catch him, but it did keep the Wisp out. Which means Cloud9 look for the Roche of their, in their own right now. No global, no RP. Didn't actually see what happened with that, but TC goes in anyway. He looks for the Roche. He, he's just still on the ground. The cheese on the ground. He starts cleaving his way through misery. That's four dead. A just popped instantly. It's going to be clockwork dead again. It looks like the Void ends up dying, but it comes at great reward to fire. They deny the Aegis. They wipe Cloud9. And the cheese rescued and recovered by IX Mike to round out the fight. Now deposited on the ground next to the pit. That actually was a pretty good chrono. Oh, sure, it didn't get the uh, Huskar, but Huskar can't actually kill the Void if Void has BKB pop, which yeah. he did. And then if he has BKB pop, he also doesn't have to worry about the song. So the only thing he's actually worried about is a relocate. And if he tries to relocate, he'll get caught by the chrono. Yeah, the, the Wisp just could not would have had to like walk around the pit and then come down from the north and there was just no time for that. I'm surprised they chose that way to initiate though. Is You don't want your Huskar walking in there. You want your uh, Clockwork hooking in. You want your Naga to go in with illusions. You want a Sleep to initiate or just finish off Roshan. You have four Spears and Necros. You, pretty much anybody else but the Huskar should go in first. And now 
I must say, Cloud9 chances are not looking good. Fire, on the other hand, showing some real backbone in this series. They had the 0-1 disadvantage. They already lost one game, so they're they're on match point. And they come into this game, go for a big AoE team fight lineup, and they've executed it well. I think their drafts weren't as good as yesterday, though. Like, what has Bone Seven really done this game, and what's he supposed to do versus all these other sorts of initiation? He doesn't want to isolate his team. He doesn't want them to also clump up to follow up after the hook shot. Uh, but he also wants to save people. But he can't do that during global, so he doesn't really have a good way to shine this game. Um, his Dark Seer performance left something to be desired, and I mean the Huskar pick, it, he just dies during Chrono. He even has a Satanic. He has armor. He has BKB. He and he has got that first free roach as well. It wasn't contested. Yeah, he has a lot of... He has pretty much what you would want on a Huskar. Except, I, mean, I guess, maybe a Crimson Guard, but... I mean, at this point, Faces Void hits for 400, oh, sorry, 350 with Empower. So Crimson Guard is not going to be able to block that much. And, the th and at this point, he attacks fast enough that he may just Chain Bash you. In which case, it doesn't even matter how tanky you are. There's no Evasion on Eternal Envy. Thinking about a little leap in here. Mid, but Misery will blink out. And now they start to just take over the enemy. Ancients, fire... S tightening their grip on this map. Yeah, they, they really needed the sheep last fight on the Ush, or sorry, on the TZ. That was the most important thing that was lacking. Uh, and uh, again, that was based off the vision. I think that they thought Roshan was a lot lower than it was, and they had to go in when they did. They could have waited a couple of seconds more for vision. Uh, Bone 7 lassoed up as TC leaps in. He just needs a couple of auto attacks here to finish him off. And, well, gets off the hook shot, and then it's over. Meanwhile, a relocate behind enemy lines. Uh, or actually just wore off, it looks like. No, they relocate like a few inches away. I'm not getting the timer for some reason. Oh, it's just like hidden above his head. Okay. So, didn't really accomplish too much of that. Another kill on Boat 7. The clock pick is just not panned out either. I, don't, I mean, I didn't really understand the clock pick to begin with. But they picked it pretty early as well, right? Like third pick, was it? Yeah, it's nice synergy if you have like it does a set up for Invoker. I think that's. I feel like that's the main benefit is to set up Sun Strikes. Mhm. Mm but we've only seen that. Yeah. Oh, actually, we haven't seen that once. I don't think we've only seen a net into a Sun Strike. That's true. That was very early as well. So it will be a Radiance for Naga Siren coming out in just 500 gold. So it's they're a gonna very late Radiance, and they have an empowered, empowered carry. Well, still, empowered doesn't help you defend against split push. It helps you clear illusions yeah. in a one-on-three situation. That's but true. well, at this point, I guess Cloud9 playing for the late game, the ultra late game. They have no choice. Void will be six slotted very soon. Which can, I guess, could be a good thing for them. But you're talking about Refresher Global, you're talking about like Ags, Lion, Scythe Refresher, Batrider, Refresher Magnus. All these things are a possibility for Fire too. Fada, super slow with only level 2 XE. We'll actually find out Ush and Mike. And now, they see him. They've got the gem here. Relocate coming in. Mike heading to the north. They're going to force staff him out. He'll accept his fate. Gets netted as he's Cyclone. At the same time, drops back down and... That's big. Is they, dealt with. they lost a gem. They want to go, though. TC's running right in. Oh, or they... And the relocate's over. He time walks in. He heads to the north, but everyone blinks out. They'll scatter, they'll song, and he did not BKB in time. Uh-oh. Misery doesn't have a TP. He has a cell. He has to blink. Okay. Hey, they're buddies TPing together. <laughs> Holding hands. Save me. That must be scary, teleporting. Yeah, and they both get caught by Chrono and destroyed. <laughs> <laughs> Void just rips you out of the air. Nice gank. That was that was a quick reaction on that Invoker Hex as well to to help set up the fight. Well, Riot probably thought they were. Uh, oh, sorry, Batrider probably thought they were smoked, so he's going to be immediately running. I, th I was surprised he didn't blink out when he saw Fado. Yeah, he was a bit slow to react. It's not something that you expect, though. Of course, Exor Invoker Ghost walking up to you. <laughs> With three points of X, he was very slow. It was only two points at that time. Yeah. At that point, you're. You're like 300 MS or less. So he does have the blink sheep. That's the initiation that they need. Like if Faces Void, uh, he, I mean he's far enough out that they, they can just die immediately. Blink Hex Meteor Blast. That is the combo. Hello, Big Daddy. DC. 
not going for it. It's far too risky. He was winding up like he wanted to, but yeah, it is pretty far to go. They're trying to finagle their way bottom, and if Fonda shows his his head here, oh, now he's in trouble. He blinks to the left, but it's right into the waiting hex. They actually relocate, but the global's going to end up preventing it. The... Oh, no, sorry, he got it off in time, it looks like. Now Big Daddy on the way out. Can they really follow this up? No, he'll make it back. But was, I guess in good news, was not able to bring anyone else there, which could have been problematic. So, another pick-off. Refresher now complete on the Void. No buyback yet, but he's got cheese as well. And the Mag Refresher. Double RP, double Chrono. This could get ugly. On to Eternal Envy is the jump. They know the relocate was used earlier, so there's no way to bail him out. Bone 7 hook shots into the Chronosphere, which might just seal his own fate. Mike comes in. A little bit of a miscue. They get excited. Yule's wall, the skewer is coming out, but it's still two easy kills. Big Daddy unable to do a thing. He'll tether to the north, heading top lane, but they're barreling down mid now. Refresher Void online in the fountain. Huskar hits way, or sorry, Faze's Void hits way too hard right now. He crits for 900, and Huskar has a playmail, but it, it seems like he has zero armor with the way he's dropping. The support's gonna combine top lane misery with that. Radiance is trying to do some work. He gets Mana Drain. Kex will be dealt with, but it's a sacrifice well worth making when Void is just banging down the middle lane. Fire showing a lot of force in this game, number four. On the verge of forcing a five, if they can just find one or two more solid fights, they'll take two, three lanes of Rax, and then they'll move on to that deciding game. Turtle Envy had buyback through all that, but does not opt to use it. And there's your refresher. That was just a really nice play by TC, though. Knowing that relocates on cooldown, jumps right in, gets the easy kill. Faces Void is so damn bad. This hero is just so hard to play against late game. They can still kill him though, if they have a It's hex. like all about the invoker, yeah, it's, like, like you were saying. It's, it's so difficult for him to get that off though. But now finally they have the Naga Siren, so they can split push out lanes without EE risking his life. Yeah, Misery has gotten rid of the Tranks, now the Boots of Travel online. He's starting to accelerate his farm curve. He's still bottom half of the farm charts, but this goes on 10 minutes. He'll be towards the top end. Not too much more room for a lot of these fire heroes to go. Ush, pretty much topped out. Could get BOTs and one more item, but he's got the basics for a Magnus. Your Void for TC nearly finished. Can only really replace the boots. Maybe replaces the Battle Fury. Mask of Madness. Doubtful. Oh yeah, Mask of Madness, that's true. Could get a butterfly or something like that. Yeah, Mjolnir's not Still, bad. Still, they're like 70-80% of the farm that they, they can really carry this game. Mm -hmm. Whereas Cloud9 seem like they have a lot more room to, to expand. If the game goes that long. Yeah, Fire Mage, just look to end this right now. So many initiators chilling in the woods. Every single hero can jump in and start a fight except for Silencer. And even he can help set it up. Gives them a lot of options in how they approach these upcoming engagements, and they'll just use the brute force option for now. Pushing through the lane, clearing out the wave bottom fire, angling on this tier 2 tower. It will not be defended at all. Cloud9 even going to show the Huskar mid, almost as a peace offering. PC will collect his bounty. More gold in his pockets. 3,200 now in the bank. So buyback online. Roshan's right about to respawn too. Let's see if Max Mike can scout it out. Yep, it just respawned. He will see it. So that's an Aegis cheese. Almost guaranteed for them unless Naga can make some huge plays. But even then they have like double BKB to back it up. So let's see who takes the Aegis and the cheese. I think drop Mask for Aegis. And then... He's kind of low on attack speed at that point. Yeah, but he, I mean, he had so hard with the power. I don't really think he needs it. Let's see. TC is definitely a candidate here. Ush, a pretty good one. All, actually, all three of these heroes could really take him. Yeah, he will, as you suggested, drop the Mask Command, picks up the Aegis, buys BOTs now. TC, getting close to six slotted. Misery is slowly pushing out these lanes, and he's stalling it, but it's still a question of what 
what end this will accomplish. Like, can they actually even win if it does go late? Still very hard to beat fire in a, a head-up fight. We hit the 42-minute mark. It's been a very back-and-forth game. 26 to 13, your score. Cloud9 had this big early lead. Well, it felt big at the time. Taking Roshan, had the tower advantage, generally in control of the game, but just a couple of great team fights. In particular, that one where right as Naga was about to song in this area, Cloud9 smoked up the ramp, got caught. Naga couldn't song, was globaled, and then TC takes down two. The fight falls apart from there. That feels like it may have been the, the big turning point this game. I still don't really like the blink rush on the misery too. It's not about positioning, it's about not getting caught by global and positioning. So even if you are in a perfect position and you get global and you can't do anything about it, your team's dead. It's gonna have a Manta sooner, so I guess that window will expire. But for now, PC is trying to force a reaction. He starts to beat on the melee racks. Mike leaps in, he gets off an initial last on Fada. Do they want a global to follow this up? They do. They finger, killing off Fada. TC commits a BKB charge. That's a lane of racks down. Let's see if they stick around longer. Naga Illusion's coming in. Eternal Envy has gone for some evasions. And now the long range dump from Eternal Envy, but surprise, you've jumped too far. Chrono 1 online, BKB. Uh, coming out along with the secondary chrono, but can he kill him in time? TC realizing that won't happen goes for Big Daddy, but he ends up getting slipped right at the end. Now the meatball comes out the other direction. Ush with RPs 1 and 2. TC fighting his way through. They all explode in a cloud of blood. Everybody on the run now. Fada on his way out. He fought back to rejoin this fight, and they look for a bit more. Eternal Envy trapped out, going blow for blow with TC. Just needs a bastard too, he's not getting it. TC ends up falling. Even the Silence are desperately trying to lay into Eternal Envy. They get off another Hex, but they can't finish him off. The evasion makes the difference. One on the run, Fog gonna die as well. So they lose their Aegis, they lose two more. They do get a lane of Rax and force out a double buyback. And now the big question is, can Fire hold with no RPs and no Chronos? Wow. And no global. Okay, so that's where the Huskar pick comes into play, but it's only once he got evasion, and luckily, he didn't get bash. I, I also think that Faces Void could have just gone for a uh, FKB kidding. instead of a Daedalus. Yeah, you do a little bit less effective DPS if if he doesn't go evasion, but it's definitely the safer of the two. It's a natural build for Huskar to go for uh, Halberd yeah. later, but uh, wow. Not it, out of it yet. Cloud9 pushing in. There is a Void buyback, and he's still pretty strong just jumping in, but not sure. He will have one Chrono. So he buys back here. Cloud9 may just decide to retreat. Still puts them one kill on the Void away from ending this game. They throw out a curse. Fluff quickly getting caught. He's got a four staff. He uses it as Eternal Envy dives to the tier fours. Now Lasso pull back further. If that Void's going to buy back, this feels like a pretty good time to do it. Silencer will buy back. Not, not choosing to use it yet. Double buyback on the other heroes as Eternal Envy makes it out safely. They alacrity him. He continues going in. Big Daddy going to be jumped a little bit farther about of the fight. They don't want this Void buyback to go to waste, so they won't end up using it. They haven't lost the lane of Rax yet. Bone 7 out of mana. Nuke down by the last word. Song is there, but too late to protect him. The tier 3, the best structural damage they can do. Well, Void does have his buyback still, but that cost them heavily, Ben. Still really good fight. They, they killed... Bat, force them to buy back. They kill Silencer, force them to buy back. So if they can get Silencer one more time and uh, fight without Global, I think that's really big too. So what's the cheese status like too? Looks like Bat Rider still has his cheese and Lion still has his cheese. I don't know if they pass it to Void or not. Prob I, I, I think they should. He doesn't have slots. I guess he could get rid of the Mask of Madness. Oh, that's a butterfly on Huskar. Screw the Halberd. Hmm. More evasion. Well, TC is almost forced to go MKB now. Yeah, over to Mask for sure. Or Bootsless. Mm, yeah, I guess so. They have enough lockdown that he doesn't really need to move that much. Plus, you are still very fast in Chrono. And he has time walk. That's true. He could go Bootsless. The Bootsless Void worked for Eternal Envy the other day. Mm -hmm. Actually seemed like the right choice there, too. They're starting to really add up the nuke damage. Now getting the E-Blade on Fada, also a solution to the Chronosphere. That fight felt like it should have been the fight for fire. You've got everything online. Get the lasso initiation, but... Ages, double Chrono, double RP. And they didn't have the E-Blade they have now. Eternal Envy didn't have a completed Butterfly, which he does now. 
but it felt like it was the fight. They can also get MKB, and TC got really unlucky not bashing though. It's not that high of a chance that he doesn't get bashed. Yeah, that's true. I don't know if he got a single bash in that second life. Yeah. Not many. Ooh, close game. This could be it for for Fire if Cloud Nine managed the comeback. Fire would just be that so close yet so far. It couldn't be the rever <laughs> for Cloud Nine. It would be the reverse. Normally they end up in the position of just being on the outside looking in, nearly making it, but not quite. Gonna make a deep foray into enemy territory now. Smoking and dropping an observer ward, hoping to get some eyes on the rest of Fire. But Fire off on the top side of the map. Nowhere to be found. No Roche for at least two minutes. The pain's already coming out. Everyone thinking about Roche. And remember, they, they are a melee rex up here. The fire... Although they're getting their lanes pushed in, close to being able to just take Mega Creeps. One good fight might do it. Our buyback status. Huskar has it, Mag and Lion have it. That's really it. So now Fort has been used. Naga Siren just used her illusions. Looks like she is going back home right now, but she doesn't really have any illusions to stall. Maybe they can stall with the song, but looks like Fire is scared. Refreshers up. Oh, the smoke through. They backed off. Get Hus the MKB. Huskar has forward. buyback. Void also has it. Naga Siren does not, though. Oh, no. Uh-oh. She does have the Manta finally, though. She hasn't generally been a huge focus. Like, TC is not eyeing the Naga. Oh, she doesn't, he doesn't need to. He has BKB. Yeah. But soon she'll become a pretty big damage threat. Just, these fights seem to be going longer. and That Radiance Burn, some Illusion right clicks, especially in the backliners, can eat through the Silencer and supports HP pool in the Lion. I mean, theoretically, they can burst down the Void. If he BKBs and initiates with Chrono, and then they get a Song to sleep everyone else, and then they EB the Huskar, they can just focus down the Void. So that's actually a decent possibility for them, although that is pretty hard to execute. You know where's a safe place to not get smoke yanked? The Fountain. <laughs> <laughs> that is... Very defensive play by Cloud9, taking no risks here. And Misery is putting pressure under T3. The Naga farm is finally kicking in. He is number 5 in terms of net worth. He was like, what, number 7 a few minutes ago? Cutting in on Mag. And the big ultimates, I mean, you can't you can't chrono the illusions. The refresher is useless versus those. So now they feel the pressure. Illusions fanning out in the dire jungle. Will scout out TC. They are... They're just getting the creep equilibrium going their way in general. Mid lanes, a little bit fire favor, but now about Dyer's even. Bottom lane slightly. Oh, Roshan just respawned. Inside. Get vision of it. Clockwork Rocket was used. But that's Both the, teams know. That's the Radiant team. Mm. Uh oh, TC gets hexed out. They're going to relocate on top of him. He's got BKB and Chrono. Global was used. TC going to turn this one around. Big Daddy going back in just a few seconds. Secondary Chrono used. They finger Big Daddy. They got to kill the Wisp. They do. But can they follow it up? RP pulls two out. They've got a secondary RP. And Envy's going to walk into it. They've songed now. While his BKB is going, another gigantic RP. Ush fights the opening. Slams it home. Four dead. And that just might be it. Three heroes, no buyback, only Eternal Envy with it. TC, through the mid, fire. They could taste this deciding game five. So who has buyback? Uh, just the Huskar. The little, oh, little oh gold god. outline means. Oh god. I they think that's game. That is game. <laughs> that was close. That was a nice effort. Go on TC, but I mean, TC has buyback and BOTs. It's just so hard not to get caught by that combo. <laughs> Four massive AoE ults and a global to interrupt your ability to dodge it. Fire. Uh, ease of execution at this stage definitely a lot lower, but they played well. Also, they 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 club together so that Huskar doesn't have to get focused. They attack the other people and he gets cleaved down. They, they kind of ignored him until the end of the fight, and that really worked out. EE getting bashed hard. They throw this Wisp up in the air. The Cleave kills off Bone Seven first. He is fighting his way through this. They'll skewer the Wisp out, but TC actually going to go down. They try to commit a little bit too far. They do end up losing four heroes, but EE's alive. Buyback from your Wisp. Two lanes of racks down now. Void also has the buyback if needed. It still looks good here for Fire. Lanes are now pushing in. Forcing out that buyback. Is it looking that good for them? I think Fire can do Roshan after, or sorry, uh, C9 can do Roshan off of this. Give EE an Aegis, trade his armlet or plate mail for it, and then 
after that they try and tank through the ults again. I don't know. I guess it's up in 90 seconds. But there is a one chrono up. Double's not up for 90. Arp, same for RP. One up, double not up for 90. I think they push out lanes, go for Roshan while Faces Void is still dead. If he buys back, then they try and weather the Aegis and the buyback. Uh, but aside from that, I don't actually think they're in that bad a position. I thought it was almost game over there, but they couldn't kill the Huskar. It, it, they might need all three four ults just to get that kill. Oh, there's a Shadow Blade on Silencer. That's pretty smart. Huh? They see Eternal Envy here. Can they pull some shenanigans? Oh, he's not Fireflight anymore. Awkward timing. From the back comes Fog. Big Daddy done though. The Wisp is out of the fight. No overcharge here to work with. As Eternal Envy will BKB, but getting kited a bit. Still no buyback from the Void. Fogged on the run. Eternal Envy trying to fight together with Misery on the IX Mike, who force staffs himself the other direction. And looks to go. Fox still being chased backwards. They're spending a lot of time hunting after IX Mike, but Eternal Envy is focused on one thing, and that's the Roche. They're not using the TC buyback. They really want to save it. There's a... There's Fireflies a, ready. Oh my god. Oh, no lasso though. There are creeps right by the Roshan pit too. Necro Book actually dragged him over. He's going to be OT over there. They're oh my god. Screaming in. The Void's going to be here. Chrono's at the ready. Finds Envy. Goes for Bone 7. He's got a secondary Chrono in 9 seconds, but it's not ready yet. RP also available. No whist. The Deputy Blast hits on 3. Eternal Envy fighting. He's turning it. He's killing off TC. He brings him down. Roche bashing him. Fada going to die as well. <laughs> Fluff doing some heavy right click. He'll get focused now. The Courier even dies. Scattering a gem to the ground. Eternal Envy seems unkillable. They got to bring him down. They've even bought back the Void for this. There's no way in hell he can live through another round tc with the chrono low there's a refresher rp kill the man they finally will and now buyback only up on invoker as well as your clockwork down mid goes misery oh my goodness no. Roche still alive they'll go for the jugular again that was almost an epic comeback he was so cool. They can still kill the phases of Wade. He doesn't actually have any sort of chrono. They also only have one RP. Mike blinks in close to the fountain. He's bailed out by a four step from Fog here. The Hulk comes streaming in from Bone 7. But remember, they are fighting without their Huskar. Not going to be an easy engagement. TC gets the first kill. RP finds Fada. They'll push him in. TC Blunt leaps past him. Well, this is awkward. Now, using the Ghost Scepter and they Song just to stall. Nog Illusions pushing in the top lane, but not fast enough to threaten buildings. They have to go back to the well. And that's where you go on to the throne. They don't have any ults though. Fired. No chronospheres, no global silence for 40 seconds. They're still trying to force their way in. The Nog Illusion's beginning to ramp up. If they back now, that top lane will need to be addressed. Are they going to retreat? It looks like Fire just can't quite end this damn game. Buy well, they need the, they need a chrono and or RP. That, I think it's really silly for them to push, even with EE down without the chrono and the RP. Because Void doesn't have buyback. They're getting so eager. They just know how close it is. And Roche is, by the way, at a third health. So, eh, we'll take a free Aegis and Cheese. Why the hell not? It's super safe for Faces Void to take it, though. Good rocket coming in. Cheese on the ground. Aegis snagged by... Aegis not Magnus. picked up by TC? What? What do you drop? Magnus has a buyback. He is the one of the only heroes in the game with a buyback so left. So drop the Daedalus here, you think? I think so. I think it's more important for him to have two lives because yeah. he can die in a hex combo, but they don't have two hexes. Well, they may just wait until this Aegis expires. I guess that's the, the other option if you want the Void to have buyback. Holy crap. Dicey game. Tough choices to be made. And Cloud9, the safety is in the well, at least for now. So Heaven's Helper and a Butterfly. Well, good thing he's got an MKB, I guess. So let's check buyback status. Four minutes on Faceless Void, two minutes on Huskar. So maybe they can go with the Huskar buyback, kill Void, win the game. That's an option. I think he's pretty much If that purpose. Void dies with no buyback, they are not killing the Huskar. If, if Huskar's dead, I feel like the, the other four can deal with the other four of Cloud9 pretty well, but... Not not the Huskar without the Void. What is Naga going with this blade? Oh, Diffuse, I suppose? Hmm. Purge the Hex, I think, from Lion would be, would be the most useful. Yeah, also gives you good effect of DPS if you are fighting. I'm, I mean, getting a Halberd, second Halberd would be really good, too. Void does have the double BKB. Radiant Curry going to respawn. I didn't actually check else. I had a gem, I think, that dropped. So let's see. Actually, he, he just spent all his gold, so he does not have buyback. So there, are, I don't think there will be a window where... Magnus and Silencer do. And you've got the Aegis on Mag. 
Yeah, Mag's not the important hero though. He's it's highly unlikely that he's gonna die with double BKB and double RP. And just not being focused in general. I mean, Fire is over double the kills of Cloud9. Cloud9 still hanging on in there due to this uh, Naga, the tanky, tanky Huskar, and some nice Invoker play from Fada. Bone7's doing Bone7 things. 1 in 14, poor guy. Like you said, not, not his tournament, to be honest. Yesterday was okay. Definitely not his day, though. They're not out of it yet, though. For you him. know, things would have been different if if that Necrobook had not been there. He would have had to take like 10 seconds to BOT in and then go over. But since the Necrobook actually dragged the creeps there, they were able to go on Roshan before it died. And that was actually a really big deal. That fought a... I, I, I don't think he was micro He was too worried about killing the lion or something like that. Well, Fire just got more tools for Eternal Envy. Now a double hex for Bush. Refresher. Giving them... Double RP, double Chrono, double Hex, and Global, and Lasso, and the Lion Hex, so triple Hex. I and mean, we've seen... And he still like, has lived through a lot of this. Yeah. And it's going to have to be a very well-timed Naga Siren Sleep. I think that's going to change things around. And, of course, the EB. And Fada has been very good about using the EB defensively on EE. And they, they are not... At this point, getting a Diffusal Blade just does not seem to be in the cards for Fire. A well-timed global, good, but not good enough with this Manta. Maybe if Misery's blown it. What do you think of the Fluff Shadow Blade? Just it's, impor the it's important that he doesn't get caught out. I think it's it's just so important that he doesn't have vision. I actually think Shadow Blade's underutilized on initiators or counter-initiators. Just because, yeah, they get a gem, but they're not going to be close enough to you to see them. It's also pretty good late game. Like if a team loses their gem, can't buy a new one, or supports run out of, they generally run out of detection. So uh, is this going to be a base race? Mm, no, it doesn't look like it. They don't want to risk the megas. Oh, actually, I don't know. They could stall with misery with a sleep and then commit to the base, but they nope. definitely want fire to back off. That's that's for sure. There's still no buyback on void, and they don't know that there's no buyback on huskar. Are they going for it? Gonna go for it. it this like is risky. TC. They could wait one minute easily. They wouldn't have their ages. They'll relocate to the top side of the map. NB and De Big Daddy straight to the throne. They're bringing in the Necro Book. And meanwhile, the fight breaks out. Lasso coming through, but at the same time, there's a song to disengage. They're being held in position back at the Radiant base. This relocate will end. They leave Eternal Envy behind. He's not killing it off very quickly, though. TC also going for the throne. The butterfly will come in handy now. Envy still has to work through a tier 4 tower. TC dropping low, has both chronos at the ready. Global now deployed. Fire got to start killing buildings off, though. Eternal Envy damn. Dancing with this tier 4, but it's not particularly quick. They'll lose their ages. TC low, still no buyback for 27 seconds. Almost killed off by a rocket. He's got the Chronos. Use one, man, before you're gone. They'll get the Wisp kill. Envy being dragged back to the towards the fountain by the stash himself. And TC will bring down your Naga. Envy just can't do it fast enough, it looks like. They'll go now for the throne. TC kept alive. Fire, pull it out of the hat. And they will force a deciding game five. What a game. Holy shit. C9 pulled all the tricks out of the hat, too. They tried their damn best to protect the EE in all these fights, but I think the Huskar pick... I don't, actually, I don't know. Was it? Did it end up being more of a liability than not? I don't, it's hard it, to say. Like, it, there it were so really many moments where it was unkillable, but it also did not win the game, and it had a really good start.